A tentative deal to raise the debt ceiling has been reached between Kevin McCarthy and President Biden. That happened over the holiday weekend. We could have a vote on this bill as early as tomorrow, but maybe not. Our next guest says that he is definitely a no vote on this bill. And joining us now is Montana Congressman Matt Rosendale. Congressman, thanks for joining us. So why a no vote for you? Oh, this isn't the same piece of legislation that we uh, sent over to the Senate about 30 days ago. Uh, we actually had taken 90 days to tr uh, carefully craft legislation that not only increased the debt ceiling, but it clawed back a lot of reckless spending that the Biden administration had proposed. It froze the spending as we were going forward, and it had a, a provision in there, which was H.R. 1, to actually help stimulate our economy through increasing our domestic energy production and uh, making sure that the permitting process for pipelines, export facilities, and mining critical minerals also took place. This bill is a different piece of legislation, as evidenced by the fact that it is a, a separate piece of legislation. They did not amend uh, the bill that the House of Representatives have already passed. And unfortunately, uh, this doesn't do anything to speak of, not substantively, about the 87,000 IRS agents. It okay. leaves the uh, loan distribution, pro, uh, redistribution uh, program in place for students. Uh, it leaves $1.2 trillion for Green New Deal subsidies in place. And quite frankly, the only permitting that it streamlines is permitting for solar farms and wind farms, which is not acceptable to me or the people in Montana. There was a large pipeline approved in West Virginia. I think it's about 300 miles connecting West Virginia, natural gas pipeline and Virginia. That's a positive. Uh, the New York Post was some reporting about that IRS deal. So McCarthy's one deal breaker should have been his promise to defund President Biden's massive $80 billion to weaponize the IRS. So, Congressman, he got $10 billion clawed back out of that. So we're at 70. Isn't On this to promise, you? Rob. Well, Rob, that $10 billion isn't clawed back. So, that, that's, so that's my question. So this kicks the can, sir, down to January 2025, when I think it, it seems like McCarthy is betting that we'll have a Republican in the Oval Office, at which time you can go after the, the rest of that money. Um, do you see this as maybe a good enough bill right now? No. Let me hold the uh, football for you, Charlie Brown. Anytime that you're promising these cuts in the future, we never see them materialize. The bottom line... Rob, is the bottom line. And the bottom line is they will spend more money on the federal government next year than they're spending this year. You're going to hear a lot of talk over the next couple of days about non-defense discretionary and mandatory spending and all these mirrors and technology and technical phrases. But the, at the end of the day, they will spend more money next year than they are going to spend this year and give the president a blank check for who knows how much? We know it's going to be at least $4 trillion because he, he's going to have as much spending as he wants through January of 25. And that's not acceptable to me. So, Congressman, you want to kick the ball down the road, similar to what Lindsey Graham is proposing, another 90 days, raise the debt ceiling and work out a deal? Or do you think this thing will be bogged down in the Rules Committee today? Take us through what you think plays out between today and Monday, which is January or June, check that, June the 5th. Well, first of all, we have to... Uh, recognize that Janet Yellen has been moving that date around more so than the weather changes in Montana on any given day. So uh, June the 5th is not a really a hard date. Right. Uh, we know that on June 15th that we're going to have another huge slug of revenue that's going to come into the federal government. And we could very easily uh, pass a bill to claw back the, the $80 billion from the IRS agents and the student loan program, uh, kill both of those and make sure that we were funded through uh, the, the balance of June so that we could continue to get closer to the piece of legislation that the House of Representatives already sent to the Senate. Yeah. No, well, we will see what happens. We appreciate Congressman Matt Rosendale. Thank you so much. Good to see you, Congressman. Thanks for having me on. Of course.